The natural world is facing one of the biggest threats in human history. Millions of lights are blinding the very lifeblood of our Earth. I'm Josh Drury, an astronomer and filmmaker. In 2017, Blue Planet 2 made the plastic crisis impossible to ignore. Since then, it has given rise to new and growing threats. I'll work with some of the men and women to discover what is really happening with light at night. I'll work with conservationists racing to make radical solutions. The world has been shaken by the plastic crisis, but can we shed light before it's too late? This is a story about light at night. In the last few hundred years, astronomers have gazed out from the edges of our home world. And by decoding messages hidden in the light reaching our telescopes, we have discovered the true nature of the cosmos. It's these photons of light that have shown us the entire universe. Astronomers Sue and Jack Jackson tell us why they observe the heavens. Started with Patrick Moore on the sky at night on the television. I read quite a few books and magazines and it just really started from there. I became interested in space after I joined Wells and Mendip Astronomers and going to various events that they held and that fueled my interest in the night sky. And from that we then decided to build a dome to house the telescope. It's the nature of human beings to explore their environment, whether on Earth or in space. Often, people do amaze me, and they ask me, why do I want to look at the stars? I think about how long it's taken that light to reach the eyepiece, and what has happened. I'm fascinated by the fact humans can look back in time to the beginning we are looking back millions and billions of years. And that ignites the spark and you want more, and you want to see more and find out more. The night sky intrigues me. Just looking up and seeing the stars and the planets that are so, so far away. And yet, you feel as though you could get hold of them. It fascinates me. Astronomers observe the light of distant stars, the light of other suns. And it is this light that travels freely through the cosmos.
Light from the sun is what bathes the universe and interacts with the matter of our homeworld, the Earth. To the planets of our solar system and the visible universe beyond. Light's journey is being stopped. Other forms of pollution are only too familiar. Bob Meisen is a part of the Campaign for Dark Skies, studying the night sky for the past 30 years. What I do is to make sure that uh, all the people in the UK who are working to improve lighting, we don't want to switch lights off, of course, we, because they're quite useful things. We just want lights to shine where they're needed and when they're needed. There are a number of possible reasons. When day turns to night, lighting illuminates the major towns and cities. It's very difficult to pin anything down because, of course, there are so many different kinds of lighting, there are so many local authorities. But Bob is particularly alarmed by the scale of lighting at night. It's about astronomy, it's about human health, it's about wildlife, the environment down here as well as up there. It's about money, it's about energy. There's a tremendous number of different aspects of lighting. Right, these are satellite generated maps of uh, the UK at night and it's fairly obvious I think if you look at the map. Uh, here we have London, uh, Birmingham, Liverpool and Manchester. These are colours. Red is a fairly light polluted area and green is countryside as you might expect. The hot spots that we see there are places where an enormous amount of money is being thrown away. But lighting can have severe implications. Uh, what are all those strange little lights in the North Sea? And these are obviously oil and gas platforms which are flaring off their excess gas. And we're, we're quite used to seeing pictures of gas platforms, but not at night often. And at night, you get this enormous flare coming out off them, uh, which is what you're seeing in the picture. But what exactly happens to all this wasted light? If you look at statistics from all over the world about the amount of money, I think it was calculated not long ago that Europe as a continent spends um, several billion euros, and that's not million, that's billion, which is a thousand times greater, on lighting up the night sky. Light is great, it's a very useful thing. Where would we be without it at night? But unfortunately, it just goes almost everywhere that it shouldn't. But just how far does the problem go? People don't realise that it's a problem that can be so easily solved. It's probably the environmental problem with the simplest solution. Getting rid of you know, the scourge of plastics, it's going to be a huge undertaking. Getting rid of light pollution, yeah, what do you do? You point your lights in the right direction, not too bright, switch them off when they're not needed. What worries me and lots of other uh, night sky campaigners is that LED lighting is running out of control. And, and that's, I think, the big problem in the developed world at the moment with lighting. We've got this wonderful new technology that's being completely misapplied. In some parts of the world, it is estimated that nearly $2 billion is wasted skywards every year. Only now do we realise what implications this has on fossil fuels 
And only now are we beginning to discover just how seriously lighting affects nocturnal wildlife. Around the world, people are now devoting their lives to saving some of the most threatened nocturnal creatures. As the sun sets, nocturnal mammals begin to appear. On the edge of the suburbs, Leslie Newman has experienced this firsthand. I like to look after hedgehogs. I like to do my bit um, because, as we know, the numbers are dwindling so rapidly. Since the 1950s, hedgehog populations have plummeted from 36 million to less than a million. But why the significant reduction in numbers? It's due to man, it's our influence and what we're doing to the environment. The main contributing factor is traffic and there are busy roads. Um, they reckon that about 100,000 hedgehogs are being killed on the roads every year. The secondary factor is, of course, light pollution, which is having a major impact. And they've got nowhere to hide. They are easily uh, vulnerable to their predators, owls, foxes, badgers. And of course, the decline in insects because of light pollution. Their, their diet is, is being lost. Hedgehogs are obviously nocturnal. They come out any time after sundown and they're, they're foraging for slugs and snails and, and beetles, especially at winter, you know, when they're going to be heading off into hibernation and they need those energy reserves to see them through the winter months. Their prey are the, the animals that actually eat insects. So if hedgehogs' prey can't get their diet, they're going to die out, therefore hedgehogs, you know, it's a natural process, you know, they're going to die out as well. But what does this mean for natural behaviours at night? We need melatonin, and so, do, you know, wildlife alike, we need melatonin to, for our brain activity, for our health, um, and, with, and we need darkness. Melatonin is produced when we're asleep in the dark. Any kind of interruption to that disturbs that production of melatonin. And it's been proven that there's been an increase in cancers in both humans and in animals because of this disturbance caused by light pollution. With evidence of lighting and its impact on the food chain, it raises the question, what effect is it having on us? Scientists have now discovered that lighting is affecting our bodies from a whole host of different sources. From the air we breathe, to the food we eat. The research about how lighting may be affecting us is still in its infancy. But the evidence we have about how it affects nocturnal life paints a disturbing picture. Cities like Bristol have developed lighting projects to reduce light pollution and its impact to the environment. As the lighting crisis becomes ever more apparent, more and more people are taking action to become part of the solution. We need to protect the night sky from light pollution for the younger generation. If not, they will not be able to see what we can see now. I know from personal experience, from 50 years of stargazing, that the night sky is a wonderful, inspiring, calming entity. It's fantastic. And I would hate it for the generations of the future to be robbed of that wonderful experience. But with light pollution, 
it's this is a fairly new area and we really we've got we've got to act now we haven't got that long if you if you just take hedgehogs as an example we've got a very limited number of years before before they're gone and whilst it's not the only contributing factor to their decline it's an important one We are at a unique stage in our history. Never before have we realised our impact to the natural world. And surely it's our responsibility to care for the natural world. Humanity, if not all life as we know it, now depends on us.